everybody. It's Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa. And today we're going to be making a big painting with a little itty bitty size. And you are going to love it. On the mic is my husband, John. Hi, guys. He's going to be tracking me with all our cameras so that you can see every step of this teeny tiny painting in case you want to make it at home, any size that you want to make it at home. Um, this is a very special day. This is the day that we announce our theme for our artist trading card club. And the theme is, for everybody who's in the club, hope. So for the month of May, we're going to be creating art where the theme is hope. You just create anything that feels like hope to you, makes you feel hopeful, anything that, that is in any way remotely connected to the positivity of hope. And the reason that I picked that theme is this is also Play Live for St. Jude Children Research Hospital. Now, during the month of May, a bunch of Twitch streamers and YouTubers and Instagrammers and creative people get together and we try to raise awareness for St. Jude. So having been able to tour uh, very blessedly and get to understand even more about what St. Jude is about, I learned one of the primary products that they try to produce there is hope. And I thought that would make it a very perfect theme for this month because whenever you're facing something impossible, a lost cause, if you don't have hope, there's absolutely no chance that you're going to be able to get there. Now, here's the important deets. In the info card is the introduction to the design team because there are a bunch of other creatives. I had forgotten to shout out one of our team members. Hi, Mark. This Mark is in the eye card. <laughs> This is Mark Bergeron. He's M MBW Arts. I don't have it up right now, Mark. Don't get me. And he creates tons of ATCs. He's been a longtime member in our club. He makes really great creative projects. You totally want to swap with him. If you don't know what an artist trading card is, it's a little tiny piece of art that you trade with other people, kind of like pen pals for grownups. Mm -hmm. So when you come and participate in our swap, and yes, you can participate in our swap, you create a piece of art, you put it in the mail, we exchange it, and send it out to each other. Some of my collection. This is some of John's collection. They're little tiny paintings. And then you get a piece of art back. So that's pretty exciting. Everybody on the design team not only is creating videos all this month about this, but several of those pieces are going to be in the swap. So you might get to swap with one of our members. So definitely check the introduction video out. Thank you, Mark. I'm so sorry. Definitely check out Mark because his video was up on time today. Mm -hmm. and, um, and there's a playlist with everybody's video. And I'll add them as I get them. And I'm kind of ready to sip my coffee and relax. It was a little stressful getting on live today. For some reason, the mic just stopped being a mic. We had Like seconds before the show. And then the stream stopped being a stream. And. Yeah, that was, was like <sighs> four Gremlin. attempts, four attempts today to go live. It's our area. If you're wondering what goes on with us, it's that we're in a very, it, it, we're in a weird area where the internet connection is. Even though we pay for extra, it's still very subject to whatever construction they're doing or <laughs> where they're digging or however the provider feels today. I'm going to, if you check the info, oh, sorry, John, if you check the information below is a complete list of the materials and colors I'll be using and John can throw up the picture. And I will put out the color to begin my picture. So this particular design I did from years and years and years and years ago. I like it. It is, I think this is like post art school, like right after art school. <laughs> um, the reason I went back and revisited this design is that when I created this, that actually was what it was about is, you know, that saying that, you know, when, when pigs fly, this thing will happen or when pigs pigs fly, this other thing will happen. Well, I was kind of a stubborn young person. And I was like, fine, I'll just paint a flying pig and then I can get on with my life, right? So that's where that came from. And I thought, this is really true. If you're talking about lost causes and not believing in something, and you, if you're a person that doesn't believe pigs can fly, then maybe you don't get to see a nice fairy butterfly pig with flying fish. Mm -hmm. But we do because we believe in things and we believe in hope. If you want to help St. Jude, there is a link in the information description below. And, of course, the moderator is going to be sharing those with you and, you know, rules and guidelines for the chat and other information you need about the stream, including, like, where the Facebook group is, where the website is, and all of the things. Yeah. Putting more paint out as I'm going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did I not have titanium white out? I don't know. I think I had. I saw some. You gave me some zinc, which I did put in there. Hmm. But I'm going to need some titanium. 
See, it's okay. I have, I have a, some liquid over here. My, I, I'm I have a long enough cable that I can come over and help. You Wait. also have a long enough cable. Well, sort of. We're yes. able to move around. It's terrifying just being I'm able to tethered. get around the studio uh -oh. as we see fit. What's going on? I so just... I'll tell you the colors as soon as I get them all out. I'm not gonna put that much of that out. I'm gonna have to miss it. I can feel the heat today. I don't see it over here. I'll just put this out. I'm gonna put this out titanium white in a pinch. <laughs> I'm looking. <laughs> we so maybe can find it. No more tubes. <laughs> It, it, no, we have one. It's just squished in, in that top cup underneath all those other colors. Oh. I'm just putting out a little bit so I have some. This this tends to get a little uh, plugged, and so I have to unplug it with my dotting tool. It's other secret use. All right. I'm ready to get going. Are you guys ready to get going? <sighs> Artist trading cards. They're a really good thing. Now, the painting that I'm doing today... This will be put in the mail and swap with one of our uh, paid members on the website. We have a free and paid membership. And uh, if you're in the paid, you get to possibly swap with me or one of the design team members. But, of course, we do have a free option. And John can be giving you guys deets about that, as can the moderators. Let's look at our materials. I've got burnt sienna, phthalo blue, zinc white, yellow ochre, and some titanium white in this particular fluid thing because we can't find much of a paint. The zinc is optional. It's just something I like to have when I do clouds. And I'm definitely going to be wearing glasses today because, well, I don't see the same as I did when I made this first original painting. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is a paper pad made for acrylic. And I've taped off a spot that is two and a half by three and a half. And I did it this way, not because that's how you're supposed to do it. Because you can buy these already cut or do them on playing cards or do them on cereal boxes. I've seen everything. But this is just so I can show you in our usual method. And I'm going to miss it since I'm on paper. That's going to let me have a nice watercolor effect. And I'm going to get my, this is a, uh, I'm going to get actually a different crystal, I think. I'm going to get this number eight crystal round. I'm going to get it in the water and take it off. This is actually more for watercolor. These are very economical watercolor brush. And I'm going to pull out a little of my brown and load it into my brush and pull out a little of my blue pigment. Now I'm going to take my mister over here so I can thin it easily for this effect. And I'm going to just really load. And you're like, wait, you can't load that much water in acrylic. And in, in general, you truly can't. But something people don't know in acrylic is that you can actually paint with it like it's watercolor. So I'm going to take advantage of gravity and the capillary nature of the paper and the wash of this to be able to get a very light sky background going that I can build on. This is that just is something really you might cool. not know that you can do in acrylic is that you can paint with it in a watercolor style on paper. And no, it doesn't underbind because the paper is actually the binder. So, very interesting. Works just similar to watercolor. It has a couple of differences. Uh, one is that it doesn't really lift up easily once it's dry, whereas watercolor will continue to lift over a period of time. So once I have that in, that gives me this very nice soft background that I can work from, which is really fun. And I can start putting in, like, my clouds and some of my other effects. And hold on one second because I forgot my reference over here. Are we okay? There we go. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, because I actually sold the original piece. Oh, yeah. For quite a lot of money. So, <laughs> I don't even know where it is in the world now. And so, I'm going to get a little brush. It's important to work little brushes. I have like lots and lots and lots of little tiny brushes that I have for acrylic painting. And that will help me get a lot of stuff done. I'm going to get a small bright. This is a number six Monza bright. Monza is for acrylic paint, and it is not real mongoose hair. It is entirely faux, so no worries there ecologically <laughs> in any way. And I'm going to get some of my nice little zinc white to start with, and I'm loading it up on the brush. You can see I'm just pulling it out, and I'm doing a thicker application now. And I'm going to add some little fluffy thoughts, the beginning thoughts of some clouds. I, I would hope that I'm getting better at this since college. We'll see how <laughs> no. it's going to go. 
Ruby was. Hi, uh, Ruby. She was saying, or asking, <gasps> you can cut, you can uh, paint these on paper pad and then cut them out for the cards. Yeah, they just have to be two and a half by three and a half inches when you mail them out. Nice. And, and Linda was saying that she really appreciated you demonstrating that watercolor technique. She didn't know that you could do that. That's really cool. Oh, really? We should do one of those. We should plan one. Um, I prefer to do, to do this particular water technique on a paper block, right, over the uh, over a loose sheet, just because it'll prevent wrinkling because it's all pre-stretched. Ah. But for this, it won't be too big of a deal. I'm just putting out some light zinc, and it's so light, we can barely see it. I better get some actual titanium over here. And I'm going to just talk about the tops of my clouds. All right, just talking about the tops of them, and I want the blue to sort of uh, show up underneath so that they feel like you can really see the sky through them because that's what makes clouds feel like clouds is that they're shaded, so they're either light on the bottom and dark on the top or light on the top and dark on the bottom, depending on where the sun's at. So even when you're painting, like, imaginative design clouds like I am now, Right. It's uh it's definitely about remembering like where's my light? Is my light above my piggy or is my light below my piggy? And for sure today my light is below my piggy. And I'm gonna just be painting this in. So excited to be starting Say Two Play Live. Oh my gosh. I've been waiting. There's so many big deal paintings coming up this month. I've been designing, like John has no way to explain to you like the design stress that's been coming <laughs> on. And you know, I've had to do my own training to get ready for Play Live. Yeah, because you're going to be p taking part uh, streaming. That's, well, that's right. Well, you know, there's a certain panda that we have. Yes. Okay, or is that how we're... See how I'm doing this little curve stroke? This is how I'm getting like a little wispy cloud right there. So I'm just using this tiny little bright. Well, it's, it's a gaming thing. That's right. You're going to be on WoW on Twitch, right? Um, or in here, and maybe Facebook, and wherever else. Yeah, not on, not on the channel. No, probably not here. Probably No, we probably won't be doing anything here. No. No, not, Facebook not maybe, but probably Twitch. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, so wherever you, wherever you, the Sherpa says we're going to be, we're going to be. <laughs> <laughs> Where the Sherpa says. Sherpa says this. So oh. I'm getting some just light little aspects on my clouds. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in, I'm going to make them a little bit stormier. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to take a little bit of my brown and I add it to my blue. Now, the trick between burnt sienna and phthalo blue is that they can make a gray, a toned down blue, a green, or a dark brown, depending on the amount of mixture you do between the phthalo blue and the burnt sienna. And you'll see where the color is leaning when you pull out a little bit of paint like we're doing right here. I might get a little zinc on here. And let's... uh. Give some shadow to our little cloud banks here, right? And I'm just doing these little kind of cloudy strokes. I uh, wasn't sure about using my cloud brushes here, uh, mostly because it's paper, and they're a pretty powerful little brush. Oh, they can, they can lift. Yeah, I'm just wiping off the extra paint. I'm grabbing some zinc to... Uh, Maybe soften this space as we're pulling this in. I just have a couple clouds I've really got to think about here. And then once those are thought about, I'm coming down here and adding a little dark bank that I'll add a bit of a highlight to in a minute. Now, Diane was asking if there was any issues with um, acrylic paint being mailed as cards. And uh, we haven't really seen any so far. I imagine when it becomes into play is when the temperatures get higher because that's when acrylic gets softer. Yeah, and I think that... Uh, so it'll be about like mailing in such a way that things are not sticking directly to the card. So I'm like pushing this over here for a little, a little shadow and then I'll talk about a little bit of a somebody here. See, I'm doing this super lightly. Yeah. Now, we also tend to keep these in these little sleeves. Mm -hmm. and, and the acrylic doesn't seem to stick to those sleeves too well, so it works out. Stephanie uh, did for our uh, ATC community, and it's in our playlist, a video about how to ATC, like tips about how to get that done and how it's like how you want to do it. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. 
So that's going to be really helpful. So I've gone back and kind of mixed my lighter sky color. And you can see I'm just softening these shadows into here. And I'm really wishing I had my heavy body paint. <gasps> so much. I may go look for it myself in a second. You know, we, we can do that. Cause I looked over here in this bucket and all we have is more soft body. I don't, I don't even, I don't even. Here it is. Oh, wrong bucket. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we have wireless. That sums up marriage right there. <laughs> I was looking in the wrong bucket. <laughs> We're always just looking in the wrong bucket. Uh, and I knocked a bunch of stuff down, so that's awkward. Oh, oh see, there we go. That's No, that's fine. That was just a tube of paint. Was it? Okay. It's like, oh my gosh, I don't want to clean that up later. Whatever I banged into, I'm very clumsy. No, sometimes. our our studio, our, our current studio looks more like an H.R. H. Giger painting. Well, and because we have the other project of the studio going on right we, now, well, we did, we're a little cramped. We did crush the half our studio into the... Yes, we did. We did yeah, so there's a whole other studio right next to it. I'm just softening the bottom of that cloud. And you can see I'm just blending this in and getting it soft because I want them to be... I want them to have a little bit of something to them, but they need to... They you need to... You like clouds. Well, this is a really good demonstration for anyone who didn't understand that why you sometimes want a, a, a firm, a, a heavy body. Over the soft body, yeah. Because, I mean, I tell you what, I can see it. Yeah. Like, it, that made a huge difference in yeah. the amount of uh, just sort of body and texture that it would put in the cloud. And just the way it applies paint is what I'm used to. It's, it's what my techniques tend to, to work with. But some people really like the soft body because of its blending. Yeah. Because they're blenders and they really want to blend and they're much less tonalist. And so it's like, well, oh, there we go. See, we're getting, we're getting oh, a little yeah. cloudy. So the trick is that you've just got to layer these in. It just takes a few, especially when you're working small. When you do a big painting and you shrink it down to a small size, the big painting can be quite loose and uh, crazy. But if you get the values right as you shrink it down, it'll look super realistic. But in small paintings, sometimes you have to work a little harder to get there. There we go. See, so I'm knocking that back a bit. Yeah. But we're still here. And we're still putting in these little cloud shapes. I'm going to add a little more see the little cloud effect that we've got going on here. A we'll wipe off. And you don't have to do a bright. You could do a round. Uh, there's some interesting different shapes in the brush line I got. Like the, I looked at them because I had thought about doing an ATC set of brushes. And I looked at the Monzas for that and didn't do them because I felt like we had a lot going on. <laughs> at the time, I was like, it's a lot for people to take in. I'm going to try this little round one. I'm gonna, I just haven't tried it for this. So if you guys don't mind experimenting with me, this is a short round number four. And I'm going to get a little of this white onto my brush. Oh, that's nice. That is really nice. Look at that. It works quite well. It works quite well. You can get lots of little cloud little puffs, right? Yeah. That, Look at these little cloud puffs. Nice. Oh, I like this. So we'll see how it holds up. Don't just run out and get it because we got to make sure that it rinses out and continues to perform well throughout a series of tasks, right? Yeah. Not just like one little minute. But that's a nice little round brush. So I might be like playing with my Monzas today. Yeah. And they're fun to play with. Oh, I am liking this though. Like, it doesn't have, well, it has an okay detail point. But it does have a nice shape for this sort of rounded process and, and effect, which is really lovely. Really, really, really lovely. Some little zinc in here. Oh, there we go. Maybe talk about some little puffs. Because this oh, yeah. is all about these clouds, right? Well, it is for me. Because you have to make an optimistic cloudy sky for the piece to feel hopeful. And I think it's important when we're doing uh, work this month to make sure pieces feel hopeful. Are reflective of a hopeful feeling. I'm just continuing to build up and add character. Yeah, uh, just pushing that out there. Oh yeah. What I'm always doing is I'm just looking for places to make my cloud um, 
not predictable. How can I take this cloud out of a predictable space and really kind of vary up what I've got going on so it feels more natural? There we go. Actually, I like this a lot better for this. Mm. So, okay, number four, short round, if you're eyeing that. Uh, if you go down in the description, there's a link to the Silverbrush website on this video. And they have like a, you can like search like whatever it is you're looking for and store locator to see if there's a store in your area if you'd like to go feel them. If you can, if you have it as an option to go feel a brush in a store, in an actual art store, I highly recommend it. Because that's how you know what you like. <laughs> what? I know, stores. I encourage brush touching. I understand. I know. I just think it's funny. The art stores are like, we appreciate you recommending everybody come in, but, you know. They're all touching the brushes. They're all touching our brushes. They need to touch our brushes. <laughs> right? I mean, the way that, you know, these companies change hands and all this stuff happens, you have to constantly be feeling your tools because they could change how they make them. They change the formulation of paint all the time. No, it's not. It's not like one formula for like all of eternity. I'm getting phthalo blue and burnt sienna together, and I'm mixing them in sort of a mid-range. You can see I'm kind of softening it through the paint. I'm gonna come here and add some of this little density, and I feel like I want to break this up here with this line, so I'm gonna do that. And then I sort of roll out the paint out of the brush and I'm loading up with just my titanium white. I'm gonna come up here. What's nice about the small size of this particular uh, canvas is that John doesn't have to like scroll all around to see what I'm doing. True. Really, really neat. I am having fun with it. Uh, I like to sweep this down like there's a up sweep of that cloud. But I think I'm going to also give it a little friend here. Maybe coming down. You got to give little clouds for Mr. Piggy to be flying in. You can see I'm just doing my little traditional little flat bottom cloud that I like to do. I'm so weird. Put some white on this guy. See, and you can see where the white like layers it. Yeah. From the cloud in front of it. And that's sort of how you layer clouds. I think this is more like, you know, me demoing how these ATCs come together and how involved you can get. So it's a good visiting uh video. Yeah, Di Diana was asking, uh she was like, I don't, you know, I, she just, she was just given uh, a set of really small makeup brushes and oh. she doesn't wear makeup. She was like, now, is it crazy for me to consider using these for ATCs? It depends on what the filament is and what your medium is. Um, some of the makeup brushes apparently are quite good for pastels and some of the watercolors. Hmm. I have not personally tested it. I have considered doing it. To see, is this true? Is, is it, is it something that we can believe? But uh, I have not yet gotten to try it, so. We, we, we do have an abundance of brushes to try from our own. I do, I do. <laughs> I've, been, I, you know, I've been kind of dying to try these and, you know, in this, in this environment. I've painted with them before, but just, you know, see how they work on these more involved little yeah. projects. So you can see clouds aren't a one and done. It's not like swish, 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 and then we're, for this type of cloud, for a mural style cloud, it is. But for this type of cloud, we build them up in little little airy fairy little layers. Now something that I can do up here is I can kind of darken this and it will bring out some of the cloud. So I'm going to get some of this watery phthalo. I'm going to come here. Oh wow. And I'm going to come back in. I've taken it to maximum zoom. Have you taken it to maximum zoom? We we we're gonna. I can't wait until we get new new cameras. They can zoom in ten times more. So you can see this sort of watery effect 
does something totally different than the heavier uh, really acrylic does. effect is. And it's you can only really do this if you're working paper and acrylic. Or if you've applied a ground. There's a bunch of really amazing grounds out there. I'm going to come back and rewash that guy. I feel like. Lucky was saying that uh, they really like the ATC cards because they're a great way of practicing uh, techniques in a small space and having yes. being able to see a good result. Well, and for me, when I was starting out, it was a really good way for me to first start selling art. Oh, that's true. Because I didn't have a big budget, and I didn't have a large amount of collectors, and I needed to build up collectors. And so I went into the ACEO market, which is uh, artist trading cards that are for sale. And uh, built up a little collecting body. I had something called the Wild Rose Studio. I painted a bunch of ATCs, mostly uh, animals dressed up in medieval clothing. Yep. Way early, way before my time, huh? <laughs> 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 Couldn't see that coming. So on trend, I was on trend decades before the trend. <laughs> I think all the stuff I painted then would be like so popular now. Oh, remember the bathtub? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I did a lot of pieces. Everyone's going to be like, what bathtub? Actually, the one that I like and still and still think about is the uh, the shape people in the triangle sort of pyramid shape tree land on the hillside. Oh, yeah. You know, and everyone's I do like, know exactly what you're talking about. I just don't know why I want to take ownership of it. Oh, and, and, of course, everybody in the audience is like, you just described the most ambiguous thing. How could any of us, you know. Have any idea what it would be? Right. Yeah, seriously, John. That, what are you doing? That's your art game challenge of the day. Art game challenge of the day. <laughs> do revisit old stuff from school. <laughs> revisit old images you did in school. Uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll give them key words mm -hmm. of, of some of your old artwork. <laughs> Say, what do you think she did? And then they can do a version of it, and then we can show and see how close they get. I'm just like, this is sort of this weird, I like weird little wispy clouds, and so, so I like to put them in now. Things have changed since art school. <laughs> and so I like to get them in there and get little wispy bits. How are your wispy bits? Because, you know, there's uh, there's weird updrafts, isn't there? The sky is full of wind. The sky is full of wind. That's that's how the pig stays a lot. Here, I'm going to look at that real quick on the big screen for a second. And, oh, see, it's starting to come through. I'm going to have a little coffee. Mm. I'm just going to freehand my pig in. I'm not really going to use my traceable, but I did provide it. John's going to add it to the website after the show. It's already up there. Oh, is it? Yep, in the link in the description down below. Best one. Mm. Well, I have to say... We have a huge amount of volunteers who help make sure that this this mm. this smoothly running machine does what it's supposed to. So I have this to say true. thank you to Kim for making sure all those web pages are always right. Now, I hope every single person is going to go out and check design team out. Yes. You know, and see what they've worked on and what they've been doing. Because they made some really incredible projects, and they're going to give you some ideas. Um, on our design team, we have uh, Stephanie B. from Deliberately Creative. We have uh, Mark B. And, and, and do I have this correct, John? You have to check this for me because it's, it's from my memory, which is the worst, which is MWB Arts. I believe that is correct. And that is his YouTube channel. He's like Instagram and YouTube and all of that. We have Fancy Nancy. I have a... Tanya Barnes of Tarts and Taz Creates. And we have, Nancy, Nancy, how are you back? Ian, the off-kilter crafter. He's got his, his videos already out right now for you to watch. Oh, I saw that. And then um, we also have Stephanie of Haley You Back. Now, on YouTube, she doesn't really do her art. You can see some of her art in a set of her YouTube show. She does a new show for Korean pop drama. Which is, it's a very busy time for her right now. It's, you know. I can't even explain to you how much it is a very busy time for Stephanie. In, it, like, stuff is happening in Korea, and it's definitely affecting pop drama. 
So, <laughs> so she's got a lot of content she has to create, but she is um, doing her stream for St. Jude um, Play Live. Yes. And so if you are on Twitch and you like to follow people who play WoW or art, she's on there and she does both of those things there. And she will be making some really cool APCs. You know, so... Over Car the whole month. So you've got to totally check her out. Carla asks a really good question. She's like, what do you do with the cards? How do you find other people to trade with? Oh. And what's the purpose of the trade? I, I'm i going <clears> to <throat> keep painting. I'm going to let you work that whole narrative out, Don. Am I? Yep. That's I all was, you. I was throwing that one over to you. I know. Okay. Because right. I'm going to quietly just catch this corner, if you don't mind, and I'll let you explain it. So there's a couple of things that you can do. Uh, the ATC cards were a way for people to do uh, sort of pen pal with, with, with artwork. And when the Art Sherpa and I heard about this, we thought it was a really good idea. So um, along with our community, we put together, uh, and actually Alan was one who helped lead that, uh, the initial charge on all that. Um, we, we were able to put together a anonymous ATC swap so that you guys could mail your cards in and we would anonymously swap them around and mail them back to you. I mean, you know who you got when you get it. You just... Yeah, yeah, but Your you information wouldn't, is just you wouldn't get anybody else's uh, a, a mailing address, and they wouldn't get yours. So you would just be mailing it to us. We would do the swaps and mail it back to you. And that turned out to be a really cool and good thing. We had a lot of people who were internationally playing, and so we created a little thing called the ATC uh, Club. You can go onto our website. It's theartsherpa.com forward slash ATC, if I remember. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, really, that's a program for you. You can join up and uh, you can send in two ATC cards. And uh, by joining up, we cover the shipping back for you. So if you're international, that's really what that was to help with. Um, but if you uh, just want to play for free, you can mail in one card with your stamp. And, uh, with a, with a, and there's some rules there on how to play. And we can do that. Yeah, it's all on the website. Yep. Tons of info. Can you tell I'm really bad at this kind of impromptu description of things well i think you did actually really well that was okay but there was sheer panic running the entire video. oh really yeah it didn't show okay <clears throat> that's, me. that's the professional me on the other side. was that what it was because it didn't show to I'm me at all total pro i'm trying to make sure that this little fluffy seems so i think you confused some folks earlier what's the difference between an aceo and an atc an aceo is a small work of art that fits many of the same uh, constrictions of an ATC, like it's two and a half by three and a half, you put in sleeves, it can be any media, but it's for sale. It's, it's a way for people to collect art, to purchase artwork from different artists that they're into, like ja Jasmine Beckwith, um, that's actually where she cut her teeth before she was this big Disney artist, was in that particular community and market because she could make these amazing little pieces people could collect original art and she built up such a massive collector base that she now has her own little disney store and atcs are sort of cousins of that well they were the that they were the original actually some people some purists really really have an issue with aceos because of their commercial nature and the idea is that these should be only tradable and for non-monetary Events and you can trade them in person, or you can join a swap and uh, exchange them that way. Interesting. So there's there's some there's some artistic drama even in the cards. Oh, it's just always art drama. Okay. What's up? What the art drama? Llama drama. Llama drama. <laughs> <laughs> so so much drama for your mama. Now it's the... a bedtime book. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm just uh, deepening the pigment here. Now, where I already have acrylic down, it's not going to soak in, but you can see it soaks in really beautifully where it has paper and it creates a lot of nice, interesting effects and textures. And I feel like now I've got a nice little background that I'm liking. So I'm going to rinse this out. This brush uh, actually was really awesome for these little clouds. So if you're having trouble with clouds on your little paintings and you're finding that my smallest size is too big for you, this might be an oh, yeah. alternative option. It is smaller. Wow. That's <clears throat> yeah. Teeny tiny. I really almost put a set of these together because I was just like, we need little tiny brushes for heavy body paint with artist trading cards. Huh. There is not like a particular set for that anywhere. We'll have to we'll have to to ponder on that. We'll have to ponder. Ponder. Wander and ponder over yonder. Yep. 
Now I got to make my little piggy. And my little piggy is going to have a little quinacridone. As he should. <gasps> John, my little mic thing. Oh. I'm telling you, there's something about this shirt set up and this little mic I'll thing. I'll get it. Yeah, you get $10 a little pop for these little mic <laughs> things. So come get it. I was telling John at $10 a pop because I was like, get a jar of these. We need like a thousand. He's like, they are $10 a piece. Okay. And, and I'm like, I'm going to have you lean back so they can't see you on. Mm. They will hear it. Really? I'm sorry, guys. I did it silently. <laughs> silently. <laughs> Silent but deadly. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why I went there. It's a very strange location to go in my <laughs> I'm going to also put out some cad red light, and this is going to give me a warm red, a cooler red, and a nice yellow, and that's going to let me get all my little piggy colors. And I'm just going to freehand him in, so wish me luck here. Oh, yeah, and, and people should check out a uh, Fancy Nancy's ATC holder tutorial. Oh, that's, like, the best. That's a really good thing just as a, like, in-your-back-pocket thing. So I'm going to take my... Had red light in my quinacridone magenta, and I'm gonna mix them together. It's gonna give me a lovely color. I'm gonna add some yellow to it. Make sure we are more towards the pink, and that's the base I'm gonna use for my little pig. Should be his, yeah, I think I'm gonna use that as his base color. I've got some yellow ochre here if I feel like warming it up in any way, and I've got some burnt sienna. All right, so see how we're going? Making this yeah. nice little color, and I'll just, uh, this is my number two filbert in the Art Sherpa line. It's my signature brush line, and I put in a couple short-handled small detail brushes because I can't live without them as an artist. I need to have uh, details I can use in heavy body paint, and these were my go-to. So once I have that fully loaded up, I'm going to try to freehand this little pig in. Wish me luck. We wish you luck. So when I'm just freehanding painting in, I try to sort of sketch in the space I think an object will take, and I go with it, is <laughs> really how I do it. So see, I'm like, this is the pig body, that's where he be, so that's where I'm going to start putting him in. And again, I have provided a traceable, and you can blow that up or shrink that down to any size you wanted to do this painting, if you wanted to do it. Uh, isn't that a nice pig color? It really is. See, this was a color mix I didn't know about at the time. If I'd known, I'd have been, like, crazy about it. And then I got to give him a little face. So, you know, we, we would have a little, he's got little shoulders here. We'd have a little head. Kind of taking up this space right here. I'm just adding these basic little shapes out. If you've ever done bean men with me, you kind of know where this is going. But I just have to, I have to know how much space an object is taking up, and then I just build on it like a little Lego. When I'm just freehanding. I'm going to add some little leggies in. And since this is my first uh, pass at the pig and the color, I'll just be loosely mixing it as I go. And then I'll get very specific about shading him or her. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to assume anything. We haven't had a talk about it. The pig and I, not John and I. <laughs> I'm going to pop a little ear here. Piggies have two ears. I'll just bring this little triangle shape up above his little head. There we go. Nice little pig ear. The hardest thing about detail brushes is getting the paint out of the brush. And so I always have a towel nearby to constantly be pulling it out of my brush. And I'm going to shave the ear back. I've just used some water with a slightly clean brush, and you can see I can just, while the paint is still wet, I can erase it back. A lot of times people don't realize they can erase an acrylic, you know, because there's a lot of ways to undo a decision you can. I might shorten his snout this time. Oh, yeah. That's a cool snout. It was really cool. I'm doing pretty good for somebody who hasn't seen this well in a while. <laughs> This is looking great. Yeah, he's a cutie patootie. 
So since this color is lighter, I'm putting it at the top of his little head, and I'll run this up along the top of his ear, and I can kind of add a little bit of that to his back. You know, if you notice that you have a color that's working for something, you can make a decision right there and be like, that's helpful. I'll just go with that for a minute. And I'm just recognizing, like, when I need a little more pigment, so I'll get it and make sure a pigment. <laughs> <laughs> Today has so been a punny day. It has been. I have been punning left and right. Now I'm I'm gonna give him a little foot. I'm gonna give him a little flare to that foot. So we'll pop that little out there. We can we can blame all the punny jokes and the technical problems on Nikki today because it's her birthday. Happy birthday, Nikki! So it's she she gets the good and the bad. It's her it's her birthday. I <laughs> lumped it in there too. <laughs> You're like, hey. She's Nikki. For all of you guys who are watching, she's one of our moderators. Does a great job helping out in the, in, in, with our community. You can see her there in the chat today. Happy birthday, Nikki! All right, I'm mixing more piggy, piggy pink. Mix piggy pink, pink pigment. You gotta mix your piggy pink pigment. If I ever had my own paint line, I'd be like, piggy pink. <laughs> Now I'm going to come back here and, you know, he's got a little kind of joint there and I want to show that joint. And I'll take another little foot right there because he's flying pig. And we'll make sure that he's got a little toe and a little toe. And that texture is going to really, really help me define that little toe space even before I shade, outline, or do anything else to define it. And then let's uh let's uh, make sure we got a little we gotta get to the rump. Now flying pigs are even rarer than unicorns. <laughs> you know so they can be hard to spot, but they do happen. I think that's gotta be regional because I've seen a lot more flying pigs down in the south mm -hmm. than I have unicorns. This is true. We we are we have definitely love for the flying pig. My mom loves it. Like that's like, uh, she we used to give those to her as gifts. That's probably also another reason why this came out of me. You know. No, and I, I, I will always say that, impressing your mom, right? Yeah, I will say that flying pigs are rare, but I I think that you know, they just may prefer southern climates. <laughs> Put a little another little leg coming back this way. Got to do. Big man. Got to, but a little bit of him is off canvas. It lets you know he came in from somewhere, right? And yeah. by putting up the second little rump, we can almost give him a bum bum later with, sh with uh, shading. So that can be fun in a minute. Mm. It can be really fun. Okay, he's a very cute shade. <laughs> and I'm pretty happy with that. That's a good beginning. I'm really, whoever gets this, I'm super excited for them. Yeah, I'm kind of jealous. Are you? Well, this is about the only way that anyone gets any artwork from me uh, out of the house. Yeah, I'm mixing the quinacridone and the cad again. One of my favorite mixes. And you can see that when you mix it, a lot of times it crawls up the brush. And what I'm doing is I'm just pulling it out so it's not living in my ferrule. Because the thing that shortens the life of your brushes and pulls them out of point or shape is paint getting up in that. That, that's what's happened to you if you're wondering, like, what happened? All right, so I got a little downward clownfish. I don't know why these fish are flying, but they are. So we'll give him a basic little fish shape. And a little bit of a tail. A little fin, scoop, 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 and another little fin. No, we can we go back in and make sure that there's a little links there for all of the all of the other members of the design team here in the the iCard thingy. Yeah. Cool, because there were some folks who were like, "How do we get over to find?" Well, check the um, iCard. Yeah. And um, 
I'll make sure that there's links in that description as well. I thought I had it, but I clearly did not. Or, or they may be there. But then I, I, and so I don't know. So sometimes you've we'll... got to go down. So what I would say on my links is go down. I still have to add brushes, and I may not have gotten the everything saved. Sometimes that happens to me. I'll make this uh, so it's just a little bit closer. There's a couple of there's a couple of links here in the iCard. We'll add some more as they pop up. I mean, like all the videos are in the iCard. Oh, okay. They, I guess there's every video is in the iCard. Oh, I see. I see. Ah. Uh, and I'll keep adding them. There we go. And I... the design team intro has links to everybody's uh, social media. Every yeah. single one. I'm going to be adding all that info to the website, and probably introducing everybody um, to them in one of the mail outs this month. The website then of course there's also the atc design team facebook group so you can see i'm just adding these little micro fins on these little tiny fish as you do like you do as i do now i'm going to make sure one of my big things is just to make sure that all of the paint that i can get out of this brush so you'll hear me rinsing it a lot because i don't want to damage the bristles but i want as much paint out of it as possible i'm going to put in the bases for what will be our bubbles and to do that my preferential brush is the number one round i could have a thousand of these around as soon as you get paint down here your round will start to flop so to the degree that you can avoid that, you know, try to. Sometimes it's unavoidable and you've got to do like a 91% alcohol soak and you've got to take a little needle, try to get the paint out if you can. If you can. You know, what's the difference between the detail brush you're using now and the one you're using earlier? The Monza. The Monza. Okay, so this has the Sherpa White filament. Yeah. The Monza has a signature fil filament for um, the silver brush line. It used to be very popular to use mongoose hair. Right. in brushes but obviously that's not ethical so they found a very good substitute it's a synthetic filament but it emulates real mongoose so oh. all the mongoose none of the guilt <laughs> <laughs> so weird. you know i i've never seen uh... i'm gonna make little round circles with the glue hand which is crazy so why would i do that I, I i've not seen those those monster brushes before they're up close so it looks like that also has a little longer filament there in it. uh yeah i have a longer filament the monzas all have a very short length out and they're 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 small brushes i can show a collection of them during the show i don't mind at all they were just oh, they were just asking you know the what the difference was in the you know, why you, why why would you even look at a different brush than your awesome red little well, if razor. you have a bunch of these, you're pretty good, but you might want a different shape. Like, you might want, you know, angles. You might right. and they, and want this crazy. Look, they have an even small, like, look how they have these tiny little small round things. This one has a shorter length out. And all it's, the a, it's a two. So you have that, and you want to see, like, a teeny tiny little braid? Look at this teeny tiny little braid. It's, like, amazing, right? And, hey, while you're at it, you know, we've got the, the ruby satins come in a short handle. So what you're looking for in an ATC brush, oh, this thing. This is the bomb. This is a quarter-inch angle ruby satin. I have to give these to my mom all the time. So it would be safe to say They're you... demanded all the time by the ginger. It would be safe to say you can paint with any brush you like. Yes, any brush you like. And it doesn't even, it, you know, it could be any of the ones that you've seen here or any of the other ones that you happen to have in your, your brush cup. Whatever is working for you is but, the brush you should use. If it's The only reason I'm telling you is, one, transparency. Right. And two, because I strongly feel that um, it's good to know what's out there. What if your brush breaks? Your favorite brush. Yeah. We like these. These are really I've good I've got to paint him a little further along before I can add too many more bubbles, but I just wanted to get some of these in so some of that work was done before I do all the bubble work. Just a little triage plan. So put that aside, my detail, detail, detail. And I'm going to keep working my little pigums. Mm -hmm. Now, the other, we got to shade my little pigums, and the first part of shade my little pigums, and I don't know why I'm talking like that, but I am, is I'm going to take this, and I'm going to get a little of my blue over here see how it makes this kind of crazy purple that's going to be his like shading 
That's a dark shadow, huh? Cool? I think so. So we're going to put a little of this at the bottom. It's going to be a very interesting little bit as we create the shading. One, again, vision. I have to contend with it. And I'm playing in his little shadow as I can. Come up here. Got to be careful not to overdo his little foot. Bring this little dark shadow up. So we're what we're basically saying is he's a very round pig. Might even put a little of this right here in the depth of the ear. I'm pulling that in. Come and shade his little mound a bit. too far back because I know he needs a round jowly. So how I do if I overtake something is I'll come back if I know I want, I need him to have a little round jowly right here. So I'll just come and put that highlight in right now and make sure that I'm defining that little shape. Let's blend as we go. Yeah, we're blending. Now Chris was asking, uh, that 91% alcohol soap can recover a blown out detail brush, question mark? Uh, if done correctly, yes. And, and um, so you've got to, there's a couple of steps when you're take, re restoring a blown out <coughs> detail. One is you've got to get all of the paint out. And then the next one is you've got to reshape it. And so it's a combo of cleaning and removal of dried particles and then reshaping through uh, heat. Yes. I have a video on how to reshape uh, brushes. It's a light touch. We've got to do kind of a brush spa video. So I'm getting ready to do one of those. Um, we're really close to opening up the new studio to everybody. Yeah. I'm actually pretty amazed we, we did anything. <laughs> it's <laughs> a really bigger project than we realized. <laughs> That's really good. I've really it, enjoyed this. It's, it's been amazing. All right, I'm going to get a little of my yellow ochre. Now, Make him a basic pig pink, right? Yeah, what I'll say to Chris there on those on those blown out brushes and everybody out there, an alcohol soak on the, on good quality uh not acetone. Not that acetone. That can damage your glue and yeah. your um yeah. finish on your brush. Alcohol can affect glue, not as quickly or as aggressively as other things, but it does dissolve the uh the the um well, and also paint. sometimes they change the glues, right? Yeah, it's and and you know, guys, manufacturing qual pro pro things are challenging at best. So we have a lot. We work with our manufacturer very closely all the time on this stuff. So and and there's a lot of high quality control there. So we know how difficult it is. So just if you're on your random brushes, it's much better to try to soak them in alcohol than to throw them away. So at least try it. Just. Be aware that, you know, alcohol is a dissolving, it will dissolve stuff, including glue. Yeah. So just. But not quickly. Not quickly. And, and all of all of the brushes, it, you know, you've seen here from, from the Art Sherpa and the Silver Rush, they, they tend, they've hauled up really well to very aggressive um, alcohol treatments by me. <laughs> so me. I can say that I have been very mean to many of these brushes and they hold up quite, quite well. You have. You're an abuser. We've had a talk. <laughs> of brushes yeah and and they all turn out just fine but i i have a theory of how mean can i be to a brush and it still live because i, I want to know i can be pretty mean to a brush yes you can yes you can so i'm gonna miss this so i have a little bit of give on uh, how it's drying because it's such a hot day and there's this really is just about getting the shading and working through my little different value sets to make sure that, you know, our little piggy feels rounded. Yeah, because we want a little rounded piggy. A little shadow right there. Yes. So see, I'm just adjusting the mixes. I'm like changing the values from light to dark. There's a paint Mr. Piggy. Hopefully you're getting kind of a sense of how it goes around and around. I'm just grabbing some different paint colors so I can blend in little spots to each other. You can see I pick up a little paint from the canvas 
and then I can move it up the piggy into the highlight. Neil wants to know. Hi, Neil. How are you getting those pink shades? Really? That's what he's. Uh, Neil says. How is she getting the pink shades? Okay, so the pink shades are, I have very little contrasting colors near me, which is colors that would be in opposite spaces on the color wheel. And I'm working quinacridone magenta and cad red light. I've got a little cad yellow here and a little yellow ochre to warm it. And then I'm using my titanium white and fluid and that. And what it is is that I, I had a little blue over. Right? If I pulled any green into this or there was any green in my pigment, it would start to gray out. And if I needed to desaturate my pig, for sure, that's where I would be going. Okay, now hold on. Why would it do that with green? Because it's in the opposing end of the color wheel. So when colors are opposite each other on the color wheel, do you guys remember the color wheel from the school? The wheel of color. Yeah, I the remember. The wheel it. of color. Yeah, so... um. When colors live in opposite ends of the color wheel, now there's probably a scientific like light wave reason that Newton totally explained about why this happens. You mean about like wavelengths canceling each other out and stuff yeah. like that? Okay, yeah, I won't go into that. Yeah. But basically what happens is like, so yellow is the contrast of purple. So if you mix yellow into any purple mix, it starts to desaturate it, make it less vibrant. So if your goal is to make very, very vibrant pinks, you're going to need to make sure that you're working all your harmonies, that you're avoiding your contrast. Mm -hmm. One trick, though, is you can use contrast to make part of your pinks seem more saturated and more vibrant. Yeah, crazy stuff. And we're not even going to get into reflective versus transmissive. Color. Oh, right? Or transparent or the way that colors can layer and therefore impact the colors above them. Color is a fun biz. It's, it's a fun biz. It's a, a a thing in our life for sure. I like it. <laughs> Probably one of the more over overarching topics is a like we have to have really good understanding of color theory just and in all parts of our work life. Photography to painting to everything, right? Physics to all those things. So I, I know it takes a little while sometimes to do these little detail pieces. And, you know, you can do any of my tutorials on an ATC. So you don't have to be doing work in, in you know, in this space at this level. Not required. By any means. And I'm misting because my paint wants to dry, but I'm saying, no, I deny you you're dry. And I'm just trying to create a nice gradation between the lights and darks. So sunlight's on the top of him like it is on the clouds. The brightest part of him is on top. And the darkest shadows are at his belly, right? I'm guessing that's because the sun is above. That's right, because the sun's above his little belly belly. And if his little belly belly is hidden, has to be in shadow. So we're getting some little shading to him, aren't we? Mm -hmm. And I love this little micromanagement of colors. And you're like, oh, I'll get a little of this color. Now I'm going to go quite light. Now, what I will say is that, you know, I have noticed that painting this 2 by 3 painting is not significantly faster than painting, say, an 11 by 14 painting. No. And you get a lot less money. So commercially. <laughs> <laughs> Work big, folks. Well, it can be. But again, like I had said, when I was coming up, I, I used this as a way to build up a collector base yeah. before I had one so I could get those big painting prices. Because, you know, collectors are really about people who just love the way you tell a story and it speaks to them. And you can't get them until you get convince them to buy some of your work. This is a low uh, threshold. People are like, well, I got, I got like two and a half by three and a half inches somewhere in the house if they really like a piece. Now, Alex is asking a very fundamentally Salvador Dali question. Okay. Is the pig flying or swimming? Flying. Because we have bubbles and fish. That's right. We have bubbles and fish. Because it's, it's surreal. It's, 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 you've 
how how very so actually this is not a surreal painting no uh, well it... if it people get real confused i've even ha- i know i know artists that call themselves surrealists that are not and it's it's really funny um what it is is surrealism should give you a sense of unease as if you're in a dream things should appear distorted and disrupted in the space whereas a fantasy piece right mm-hmm. or magical realism piece is about creating a sense of this is true somewhere right you don't look at a dolly piece and think this this happened somewhere you you understand you're looking at somebody's dream somebody's disconnected sense and it's it's one of the trademarks of surrealism is the viewer should whether they're educated in art or not get that sense of they're looking at a dream Whereas fantasy or illustrative work will tell fantastical stories like we are with Mr. Piggy. I feel like surrealism is is often dystopian rather than sort of... It can be. Yeah. It can be. It's it's very often accompanied. I'm adding little highlights where I imagine that we've put some extra highlights up on him. Um, It can give you that sense of yeah. Unease and and concern, and that's probably where it comes from. Is that in the, in the very nature of the painting is designed with its color construction, object placement, and everything else to make you, as a viewer, slightly uneasy. Yes, that's just something to watch for. But it's okay either way. So you can just see I'm just, you know, I think about this a lot when this is going to somebody. Yeah, <laughs> it goes way deeper than a lesson. I'm like, <laughs> oh boy, I gotta really. I gotta really work, Mister Piggy Pants, but he's looking pretty good now. Well, the Sherpa does her best to try to sneak some some art education in on I you. I don't mean to. I can't help with oh, the whole problem. There's, you know, we took all those art history classes together in college, you know, so I could date that pretty girl. Mm-hmm. And look at us now. I know. I'm so sorry, babe. Well, look I at mix that. my uh, quinacridone and a little of my. Uh, a little of my yellow, my cad yellow. I might even get some of my cad in there. I just want to get some little ear color going. Well, no, I'm I have to work his ear. You're, you were very sweet to take those classes with me. Oh, no, I have to say thank you to Mr. Mr. Tally, who uh, educated me in the historical ways of art. I learned he all did, sorts of he? things, like, you know, that I can talk about now, about Broncusi and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, he actually, he won you over. Yeah. He did. Our our uh, professor really won John over. Yeah, he got. I think it was a nice break from high energy physics too. It, well, you know, I, I'm creating a much warmer color to tip in the ear to to make it feel like a little light might be coming through there. See, yeah, just a little bit. I've learned a few tricks since I originally painted the pig. Yes. Get a nice dark uh, pigtail kind of color, and I'm gonna make Honey. a little curly tail. Honey says it looks way bigger on screen. Oh, I know. It's such a tiny painting. I'm, like, really challenged. <laughs> when I zoom out, you see it's like, oh, my gosh, it's so small. At one point, this might have been a, a challenge on uh, YouTube. <laughs> there we go. So we've got a little tail going. You know, this could be really fun. In the green screen room, because you could be a giant painting a miniature painting. <laughs> this is actually a 32 by 60, as Craig just said. Hi, Craig. How are you? So I'm mixing. Remember how I said the brown and the blue can make kind of a gray color? So I'm going to first mix kind of a gray. I'm going to make sure it's fluid enough so it's going to flow off my brush in a nice clean space. And I'm going to make a little decision about how I'm going to put in my eye. I might still put in a fairly big eye, but I'm going to do it a little differently now. I know a couple of things better than I used to know. So the eye is open widest right here. And I'm going to let that sit there. And believe it or not, that's actually the white of his little pig piggy eye. I'm going to get some very, very light pink, the lightest pink that I can get. Oh, still got some gray in there, so I'm going to really, really rinse it out. 
this is the big deal. You'll either have to have lots of little detail brushes or really rinse them out. Because they will hold pigment and it will gray your colors. That's, that's happening. All right, let's give him a little lighter lid in here. And then I'm going to come and get some of the darker pinks that I have worked out. It's always nice to add a little of the quinacridone to deepen it. So just darkening it up a bit for around the eye. Right there at the corner. I need more zoom, Captain. You do? <laughs> and I'm going to darken just the front of the nose a little itty bitty bit. You guys see where that is? Maybe a little under here. It's it 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 because it, it feels like you're painting a much bigger painting than you are. Than I am. <laughs> Because the camera or it zooms in a lot right now. It's and so much harder than you guys know. It's not like paint with every color I have. And sometimes I worry when I do these longer streams. I'm adding the, now, see how I'm adding that highlight there and it really pops because of that dark shadow? That'll help us. Sometimes it's just easier to, now I'm doing a little tapping motion. It's another little small space detail trick where I'm trying to blend a small area. Yeah, I do. I, I always worry when we like do these long, long, long guys. I'm like, oh, it's so long. And hello from Belgium. Hello from Belgium. Hi, Christo. We have people all over the world joining us today. It's pretty awesome. I saw some folks from Germany and India, and I know we have have a couple, you know, Canadians loose above the border, but no, they're, they're always up there, you know, high sticking. No Canadians. No, absolutely love Canadians. Please don't, don't. I joked the other day and somebody like lost their mind. We, we don't. It's a joke. We we love Canada. We, we have a Canadian everybody. daughter. We would move back to Vancouver if we were given the opportunity. Actually, on either side of the border. Yeah. You know, any either of the Vancouver's would be fine. We like Pacific Northwest Territory. We think it's all awesome up there. I don't know why I had to like, you know, they feel like I had to. Tell everybody that we love them up in the Pacific Northwest. Because I made a silly comment. <laughs> and people go, no! <laughs> the thing was there, you said about Canada is terrible! I love Canada, oh my gosh. It's just painting and hanging out. Painting and hanging out. Yeah. So you can see I'm making this little teardrop, and this is going to help me keep this wing from getting out of hand on me in this small, small space. It can be really hard to create in small, small spaces. So next month, we're going to get together and announce the theme the same way, design team, and, and, and we're going to all come together and each create something. So that's pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. And I will, again, do whatever my design is that's going to go into the swap, and I think that's going to help me keep up on the workload. So hopefully these do okay on YouTube. If Didi not, we'll move them to Facebook. <laughs> now, Didi was just asking. Now, the ATC card swap doesn't have anything to do with St. Jude's. No, no. I am this whole month. Everything I do is St. Jude related, so everything will have a theme of hope, of optimism. It will be something that helps us think about those things. Yeah. And we are trying to. Uh, we're part of Derp Squad, which is a team that's been uh, raising funds for St. Jude for six years now. Yeah. And we are contributing to that, and we are ourselves Art Aid, if you check the, the link down there. That's right, we're Art Aid. And you can help St. Jude um, in a variety of ways. I'm adding some blue to darken my color, so I can create some shadows into my wing. Um, so you can help St. Jude by, you know, helping people know that it's out there, sharing events that you're seeing during Play Live. You can retweet, you can follow them, you can just help people know in yeah. the world that this is a resource. If, yeah, if you do nothing else, make sure that you help the St. Jude's folks by donating, by getting a tweet out, by letting other people know what's going on, because that's probably one of the best organizations that you can get behind helping, because it just helps children all over the world. 
all over the world. St. Jude's benefit, St. Jude, not Jude's, St. Jude <laughs> benefits children everywhere globally. They treat the least treatable childhood illnesses. Um, John has some really interesting stuff that he can share with you about um, what they've done and things that you might not know about St. Jude. Oh, man. So, I have to, so you're like batting that over now. They have like two sheets of yeah. like all, it's like incredible. Where to even begin? Like, Just pick a um, fun fact. So the, okay, so I'm not going to read off the sheet, just stuff that I know. By help, by donating to St. Jude's, the doctors there, everything they do is open source medicine. So by helping the doctors at St. Jude, you help doctors all over the world cure childhood illnesses because they take on the hardest, most impossible diseases that, that plague children and they solve them. And then they make sure that those cures are available to doctors everywhere. So this organization really is, uh, I mean, their mantle is to take on the hardest problems that children face from genetic illnesses and solve them. So the, I can't think of a better organization to get behind. Um, is that? Yeah, they never give a family a bill. A yeah. family that goes into treatment at St. Jude Hospital does not receive a bill. Once you are a patient, you are always a patient. So if your cancer or illness comes back, they will uh, continue your medical treatment. Um, I'm going to try not to get triggered because the tour just They're the me. first and only pediatric center be, to be designated as the Comprehensive Cancer Center by the National Can Cancer Institute. Gosh, that's beautiful. They also have the only targeted brain tumor treatment in pediatrics, it's a it's a super collider. <laughs> no, no, it's a super. It's a, it's a particle accelerator. Particle accelerator. It's six <laughs> stories below. But what? Ha okay, so like if you if your child had a brain tumor, yeah. you and they couldn't operate, you'd have to do radiation. But the radiation does a lot of brain damage, and so a particle accelerator is like a laser beam with particles. So it uses a magnetic stream to direct the particles very, very, very accurately. So rather than radiation, let you do that. <laughs> yeah, so the, rather than the radiation I having a splash effect, sheets. yeah, so rather than that radiation having a splash effect as they treat the tumors, because it's it's like a it's like a shotgun when it comes out of these these tubes. Uh, a, a particle accelerator uses a magnetic bottle to shoot them like a laser beam, so it's very very accurate, and they can calculate the decay so that it only hits the tumor, and n it, and it can save. What is it, Cinnamon? 40 points of IQ? 40 to 60 IQ points on a child. So that's incredible that they can use this technology to, uh, that, that, you know, scientists that I dare say that I aspired to be, where they were going to use these tools to crack open, you know, singularities and to understand the edge of the universe. They're using it to, to, to cure childhood cancer. And it's they have these amazing. things run. They have one of the, uh, the biggest... Um, and uh, uh, most scientifically um, up-to-date particle accelerators that's underneath uh, the St. Jude it's, facility. It's the only one that is open in pediatrics the way that it is. The other, uh, the other places that have this treatment, it's not continually open in the way that the kids need it to be treated for their brain tumors. So it's like only op like they're only open for like one day and it's millions of dollars to do the treatment. Okay. And I, I know. It just we, is not even doable for parents. We, now tell us what you're doing with the orange because I know we, we got super I'm passionate. Sorry, no, I, just, I know. I, I'm so totally I'm here with you. So what I'm doing is I took a little of my cad yellow and I lightened my cad red and then I'm just doing my pure cad red and I'm kind of creating a little bit of a lighting effect on my fishies and uh, enforcing their fins and just trying to make them feel a little more fish like little next next you know next layer of color right yeah that you've got to do and that's letting my wing dry and my eye dry because you know you've got to do these things in time and so i'm getting some just blue and i'm gonna come to the front of his little blue eye and i'm gonna tap this in as carefully as i can under the lid creating the idea of this sweet Blue eye looking up. But see, I'm better at this now, so I'm like, I got to do these things at these certain stages because I can't do it the old way. <laughs> 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 I'm going to start shading out my wing. I'm going to be doing that with a combo of my cad red light and my cadmium yellow. 
And I'm going to be making sure that these little monarch wings feel very monarchy. And so my first thing will be to create a nice ombre little transition blending of all my little oranges and reds so that my wing feels bright and real. Otherwise it might not. And that's why I like layering the reds in here. But sometimes I'll just get my pure CAD and it helps them just blending right on the canvas while the paint is still wet. You know, making sure that we have a nice, I'll get like some pure yellow in here and I might come in and, you know, lighten some. So they're like um, a monarch wing, but they're kind of fantasy. I'm not, you know, uh, strictly following like a mo particular butterfly um, species pattern. I'm just trying to make sure that I've got a nice bit of color on the wing that I'm working from. I'm right here with this pure cad. It's always fun for me. And a little bit of the yellow and or, uh, light red. But just working out our wings. Shading them up. I like to do. So how is uh how's everything going there? Really good. I'm you know I'm I'm just wanting to make sure. I can't sure. see the chat. That's why I oh. ask guys. I guys I can't see John or the chat. Something no, that our viewers sometimes don't understand is that I see neither John nor the chat. I'm in a little, and that won't change in the new studio either. Um, I'm see, in a little. You see different things in the new studio. Um, yeah. You have different. You have different monitors. But yeah, I, we got all quiet. I was over here re, re. I was just. I was just reading. They're very pro supportive of St. Jude's in the community as well. I'm so glad. Lots of lots of echoing of uh of our sentiments. I appreciate everyone out there. So that's what I was just reading. That's why I was a little quiet over here, just sort of, you know, uh, appreciating that we have such a wonderful. Yeah, we've already had people, uh, uh, like, even before this live stream today where we're, like, official, we've already had people come and help us. I just not words of appreciation. So, I mean, we're all going to do this together. I think we can reach our goal. I set, like, kind of a crazy goal. <laughs> Not as crazy as the first original goal I wanted to set, which is what it takes St. Jude to stay open a day. Oh, yeah. Because it takes St. Jude, how much is it? Uh, is it uh, $2.4 million? $2.4 million to operate every single day. Yeah. And I thought that would be a fun goal. But then I learned that that committed my whole team to that goal. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a lot to, like, make it, like, you know, if somebody had been like, $15, I'm good for 15 that seemed like a lot to commit everybody to. I'm not on the line for it. It's just a goal that we have in our head. So our goal on the um, thunder there for that, that's just, that's just, you know, what we're hoping to do. But it's not a pressure cooker. <laughs> now you can find links to the uh, donation for St. Jude's down in the description below, correct? Yes. And our moderators also probably have some, mm -hmm. hopefully. So they've got that there, but yeah, you can find that there. You can also search uh, Team Derp Squad, like just search Derp Squad, and you'll find other people streaming. Um, and if you if you go follow the the lady who started this is Trade Chat. Uh, John watches her like very regularly mm -hmm. for his WoW. If you're into WoW, you got to watch her. I mean, like not even like provisionally, like you've got to, because um, otherwise you won't know things that you need to know. And she tells you all the wow things that you need to, to be aware of. Um, so she's got a YouTube channel and a Twitch channel. And she's one of the new Facebook um, channels. So she's on all of those. And she'll be doing stuff. She's, uh, she's raised hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars for St. Jude. Yeah. All right. So I'm just, you can see that I'm, what I'm doing is I'm very carefully darkening and lightening areas of the wing before adding the, the black and white highlight spots, just so that we have some nice variance there. I'll let that uh, dry for just a second. 
And one thing I can do while this is all drying is I can put in a little of my floral effect. Oh, yeah. Which is fun. He's a very involved painter. He is. <laughs> it's funny. Craig, Craig was saying, well, we're, you can tell by the signature that this, this painting is definitely BS. What? Or Sherpa. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Because it says Cooney instead of Sherpa. It does, You don't see it? those very often. Did you just knock over your little I did, paint? right into my that, paint. That's okay. I knocked paint. I knocked a paint bottle right into my paint. And it was like my, my picture in pictures right in front of my face. Paint into paint. I've got these crazy glasses on. It's a whole thing today. But that's it's a okay. whole thing. Because we're, 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 we're painting a tiny, tiny painting. And we're just taking the full time. You guys often ask me for these pieces that are a little more involved and in depth. I'm taking a little of my burnt sienna, yellow ochre, and phthalo green. And I'm going to put in some very tiny little dabs of the wreath. Is that how we're doing? This is a little garland of flowers that uh, he has around him. I like to make sure that little bits of green have places to stick out. And I like to vary it like a dark green against a light green. I leave a couple spots open because there's, you know, there's going to be flowers and other things that are there. And now I'm going to do a very dark uh, blue and purple. So I like to take my blue and purple together. And I'm going to get a little of my fluid over here, if I can, if it's not too plugged. i got to move that plastic sheeting, plugging the opening. So I'm putting up the fluid paint. And I'm going to get just the corner of my brush with a little bit of that fluid paint. I'm going to come right here from one of these openings. I'm going to just brush out. A couple of these ribbons. So cute. I like it. I really like the thing. I think it's really good. Is he looking really good? I like it. I like him too. And I might come in and get a little of my just pure purple. If I need to, I will thin it out with a little of my water. When I'm working really small brushes, I don't really try to carry water over with them because they're tiny and they don't carry a lot. Being tiny. Being tiny. I'm just adding some variants to the ribbons so that they show up. Because we want the ribbon to show up, don't we? Yeah. And you can come back. I just sort of rinsed out. You can come back with a little bit of the white and, you know, highlight as well. Giving that effect of different elements of light catching the ribbon in the sky. Now, that's dry enough, so I'm going to take a little of my cad yellow. To my phthalo green, I'm going to grab some white. And what I'm trying to make is a loosely mixed, it's just sort of loosely, loosely mixed on my brush, bright greens that I can put over this to brighten it up because it's a very deep green right now. And I want the deep green just to help it seem more real. But I don't want it to take out all the color. And that's going to need to have a little dry for a bit. And I'm rinsing, rinsing, rinsing this out. And now that all this is in, I can take my detail brush while I'm at it and come get just enough of my little fluid. And I am painting these bubbles differently than when I uh, first came out of school because now I'm going to take some of the things that I've learned over the years to help me make my bubbles feel more bubbly. More so bubbly? Look at me warming up, making 
big bubbles and little bubbles freehand. Goodness gracious. There we go. We've got some nice bubbles. Rinse this out. I will take the white paint that I just put out because it's very fresh and so it'll flow very nicely. And I'm going to come over the top of him and make a little white spot. Right? And I might come down here and there's a little fin right here, so I'll leave that out. A white spot right here. You know, because clownfish. And that's what we're doing with these. We're just making them feel clownfishish. I will go ahead and put a small dot right there for an eye. Small dot right there. That's going to need to dry for a second. <laughs> Let's give him another little white bit. And again, we'll tuck this little stripe behind a fin. I'll put back in in a little bit. I don't even think that this piece, like, I'm like trying to think like, I, you know, I forgot the amount of time that went into it. I bet I took more time when I first made it, like a lot of time. Yeah. I bet I was so slow when I originally painted this. Because <laughs> I'm thinking this is, wow, this is like it's taken a minute. I'm going to also take some of my fluid black. The reason I like to have some of this around, especially when working small things, is the flow of your paint yeah. is really important to the fineness of your line. And so if you're trying to get really fine lines, you're going to want to have paint that's flowing out on you. There we go. I'm going to take a little of this black, a smidge. Right underneath that eye right there. And I'm also going to add a little bit of that dark. That's just a smidge right here. And we'll let that have a have a little bit of a rest, right? Needs a rest. So I think I will go with the white first. Give myself a dot. And a dot. Maybe a shape like this. It's so interesting looking back, like I'm like, oh, that's gonna be challenging because like it was so finely lined. And I'm like, oh man. Did I do that with a pen? What was I thinking? Why did I put so much detail in? It's interesting to see how the work changes over time, too. Like, the things that you think are important mm -hmm. creatively, and then you change your mind. You're like, ah, I don't really care about that as much. And also, the size of detail brush it's going to take to do the, li the, the lining on these wings. Oh. Concern. <laughs> so much concern. Well, that's okay. We're just here to watch. Well, you are now, aren't you? Well, you are. Everyone else could go because, like, they have the escape button, but you don't. No, uh, I think they... You're everyone, okay? <laughs> everyone's pretty interested in being here. I'm so grateful. You guys don't even know. I'm going to take a little of my blue, and I'm going to make a very, very, very light color. I just got to get enough pigment on the brush that it will really... There we go. Bleed into this fluid paint. See how it's done? Mm -hmm. So now... Can add a little bit of that sort of light highlight to him. Her, I don't know. I didn't get the I didn't get the memo. We didn't check. We didn't check. I'm gonna add a little bit of that right there. So there's a little bit of you know highlight to the eye.
trying to highlight her a little bit here. I gotta make a decision here. I think I just don't remember like what headspace I was in. I'm getting my pure blue because I'm trying to define this really fine dark outline that's here. There we go. Can you guys see it now? Yeah. It's so it's like that back and forth of like finding finding that space and just like okay it's 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 here and I've got to do this and then over painting it and then going no I'm gonna go back and this one is really hard right here. That reference photo it was a two by th no it was an same eight size two and a half by three and a half yeah it was an ATC that I did. They are hard, look. Super hard. Yeah. Little tiny. Little tiny, little tiny works of art. Very hard to 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 to, to paint. Now they're they're actually a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. It's just the eye space is again a super challenge for me. So I'm let that dry for a minute, because what's happening is it's getting away from me and stuff is happening I'm not into. So I'm going to have to fix it in a minute, and the only way I'm going to be able to fix it is if I let it dry. So while I'm doing that, I'm going to just enjoy myself by getting some blue and a little fluid white onto my brush, loosely mixed. Seems like it could be the title of a Disney musical. Let it dry. <laughs> we have children. Don't even, like, if they hear it anywhere, don't, that disturbs the force more than anything. If you start to sing that song, they know. They know and will join you. I'm just adding a little blue kind of little flower here. It's a little spike flower with these little little these little flower petal strokes. And by using the mix of fluid white and blue, it's helping me shorten some of my effort here. I wouldn't say it's one stroke, but there's certainly some similarities that we might be having with all of it. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna see if I can't thin out a little bit of my pure uh, cadmium in quinacridone. And I'm gonna define a little thin here. And define a little thin here. Not too bad to do. Let's see if I can't do something about this eye. So I'm going to try to make my eye gray again, which is a, like an off white. And if I can't lift this, back because it got away from me. Sometimes if stuff gets away from you, you just take it out and visit it again in a second. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sometimes that's what you do when it gets a little weird. I'm going to make a slightly darker gray. Give her those Miss Piggy eyes. I'm going to have to. She's still good, though. You know, I, know, I know Twiggy is really given the credit for that, but I think Miss Piggy is the one who made it famous. I have to agree. I have to totally agree. I'm going to get a little of my quinacridone. And I'm going to do some basis of the little kind of round roses. But, you know, our little circular strokes, they, they circle each other. I'll make a little bud there and maybe some buds there. Once I have those in, I can just get some white paint. And hopefully, make some little marks that feel like petals. And let me tell you, it's really hopefully at this stage. because These are small little bits of things. There we go, but we have some. Have some. We have some. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Now, on the bubble, first, I'm going to try to get a little of my pure magenta and my white. I might even add a little of my yellow to it. I'm trying to make it quite a bright color. I'm going to add a little pink down here and add a little pink up there. If I go outside the line, I will erase it. Clean brush, just hopefully it hasn't dried yet. If it has, I'll go back with white to remove it. I'm going to keep going with my, my bright, bright pink. I'm just starting to put in the bubble liciousness now. Glue it if I need it. Get the claws off my brush. And all of the pink. The bubbles refract a lot of light and they have this little soapy bit on them and so they're actually quite colorful. And that will help these feel more in keeping with uh, floating, you know, soap bubbles over underwater bubbles. I need a very bright green. See how we're doing. Any little bits of color. These edges here and there. I'm going to see if I can't get a little shading going on in the bubble and then I'll keep popping a little bit of the bright color. So I've got the blue and I need very light, as dark as it is. I've got the beginning of that in there. And I will just keep shading these till they bubble up. Wow, that looks really cool. Oh, does it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. And we're going to keep working it. It takes a minute, especially the small. Because little changes have big impacts. Oh, yeah, especially on a little painting. Uh, on a little painting, a little change has a big, 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 big impact. So you're just always trying to get past whatever little thing that you have going on. You can see how, like, for this, it's really nice to have the soft paint. I'm going to do my CAD and my ink. Let's see if I can't. Prove this a bit as I'm working it. I don't have a bubble reference here, guys, so I am doing this from memory. You've done pretty good with your from memory bubbles. Just trying to think, like, the last time I studied them, what was, like most important to me about this subject what was like really hanging with me your memory bubbles my memory bubbles we all have memory bubbles it can be very challenging i'm gonna get some more white in here so the, the yellow has a little more coverage and brightness to it um it can be very challenging to do things like this from memory because you'll remember things about it like oh they're very colorful but you may not remember exactly how they are so don't do as i do right here like, get a reference. <laughs> get a reference, man. Don't be like me. Referenceless. 
reference list. You have your internal reference point. I do, don't I? I'm pretty sure I can pull reference points out of my head. Oh, I probably have to repaint the whole thing. Then I'd be like, <laughs> oh, that's where the reflections go. Oh, sorry, guys. They're there. I like to use references. Um, These bubbles look awesome. They're like magical bubbles. Yeah. Really good. I like them. They're a little too magical. But they're getting there. Find that perfect green, the bubble green. Maybe even brighter. Bubble green is a very hard green. Yeah. And actually, probably should be some kind of like combo of turquoise. You know? Ew. But we don't have that, so this is what we're doing. Yeah, pretty good. And we're still fussing with it. I'm sorry. That's all right. It's your show. I know, but people got to come. Well, they can pause <laughs> and come back later. That's true. That's the How's beauty. it out there? Is anybody still with us? Oh, my gosh, yes. I hope we have some new people who are going to be joining us for ATCs. Yeah, we have lots of new people who are very interested in the ATC thing. They're, that's definitely, definitely happening. And I would say is all of you guys who are joining this on the on the replay of this, you should come and join us on the on the live. It's a lot of fun out here. We do you know, chatting as you can see that now in the little side chat bar. You can see that it's set up. It's just really nice. I love having the audience out here to talk to you, answer questions. So hopefully this is getting better as I'm going. Trying to do better. All right, there we go. Sometimes it's getting those little touches. It's just really challenging to get the, the details of it. And then you've got to switch down to a more detailed brush and spray your blue so you've got some fluid that you can rock out over that. Hope my hand is steady. Let's everybody hold their breath. Don't hold your breath really hard. It's not good for you. It's not good for you. <laughs> so, is this a replay? No. What do you mean? No. <laughs> Why? That's a trick question. Oh. Are you live right now? I am live right now. Well, because I had done that weird thing yesterday where I thought it would be helpful, like how I thought it would be really helpful to everyone know that, you know, we were on staycation, but then it just turned out it just told them I was live. Yeah, you know, I guess that would be pretty clever to like record something fake that you're doing. Like you actually sneak off somewhere and play it like right through there. Mm. I don't know if we're, I, I'm not, we're not responsible doing that, for that if that's ever happened anywhere. <clears throat> we're not doing that though. We're no, just... that's not our thing. But sometimes I will like put up like a schedule thing saying, "Hey, we're on vacation. Don't worry." And then everyone's like, "Are you okay?" <laughs> Although I think it actually, I, if I if I thought we could get away with sneaking off and dropping a recording, I totally would. Would you? <laughs> I think, I, except I think that people would be like, "No, we, they 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 know too fast. They give me they give me a hard time too fast." I am tipping a little white on the feet, trying to imply a little toe. Those are those are those are piggy toes. Those are piggy toes. Right. Like if you're counting piggy toes, that's what you're counting right there. Those are the piggy toes. There we go. A little highlight. A little bit, and then something like kind of at the back of the eye here. There we go. All right, so we're getting there. They're getting closer. We're getting there. Yeah. I have my smallest detail brush. Oh, I do. I think I do. I can't even see it. I've got such a small one. It's so This is small. my smallest detail. It's a three over zero, and you know why I wanted it now, don't you? What I'll do is I will highlight. Look at that. I can't even zoom in any closer to see it. That a little bit so that those lashes aren't such a hot mess. Those are awesome lashes.
what you do. You gotta do what you gotta do, right? Now, in sorry. the past, Fix with this. our ATC card, we've had we've had some delays in the past few months. Yes. Now that that's because you know we've 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 been you know we had to do a lot of internal changes on how we've been handling the ATC card swap. So we apologize for the last couple of months where things have been a little disruptive, but it's fixed. It, yeah, that's right. We're back. I think we're, we're back hopefully track. fixed. And there's there's a handful of cards that are still going out to people who we swapped out uh, with me with with cinnamon. So and most of those folks have been notified. Um, but uh, as we move forward in the future, our the cards will be swapped out really uh, very quickly. We've got a, a really good system in place, so we'll be able to get those traded out. So um, generally, you'll you'll be receiving. Your cards within. So, but well, so what it is, you get you get the theme on the first of the month, yep. with the design team. Then you have to mail your cards to us by the thirtieth of the month because we moved those two days. It used to be the 29th, but now it's the thirtieth. Yep. Because we're notifying a day later, and then we do the swap and mail it to you. So we're actually kind of like a month different than where we are. Yeah, and that's just because you know it takes time for we we give we have time for everybody to get the stuff in the mail and then swap it around, but. From the time we do the swap to the time, you know, like, like, just generally consider that your card will be about 30 days behind in getting it back. Yes, or, and or then your... if you're overseas, sometimes that can be a thing. Yeah. If ever you have any trouble or you are just, just have a question or anything, that we have an email for that, don't we, babe? Uh, we do, I Support believe. Support at theartsherpa.com. Let me double check it. Because that's what we've been handing out. Uh, we have. So you can email ATC at theartsherpa.com for any ATC related question. Oh, is that new? That, that's actually been there. I but have been we, sharing it, we just, the we wrong just, thing. Well, it, it, support at theartsherpa.com works as well. But you can, but if you ask, uh, if you go to ATC at theartsherpa.com, that goes directly to the ATC club team. Okay. And Which support. is really us. Well, and you know, there there are other people who who volunteer and help out. I don't want I don't want to you know at all make it seem like we don't like. Oh yeah, I, I see what you're saying. I, yeah. We have a huge... right now, but the 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 people now physically handling the cards is us. Yes, we do the card swap, but we have a lot of a lot of volunteers and team members who help us. You know, moderate our website and uh, Brian, who does our administration and management. So you know, we have we have team members all over the place. And, uh, okay. <laughs> but I just, you know. Yeah. I'm All right, I'm putting now. a little dot in the center here of these little eyes. It's very stressful, but I got it. I, you know, I can't, I like, I can't even zoom in to see it more from here. This is about the pain I'm using. If you're wondering how I'm getting these crazy hair fine lines. That is so crazy. The, the way I'm getting these crazy little hair fine lines is that this brush is very pointed. <laughs> Very, and that helps. And it lets me, and the paint flows off my brush pretty predictably. And so I can, and I can rest my hand against my canvas, and that's how I'm getting these little detail bits. So you can see I'm going around all those pieces. And the reason I rinse out my detail brush a lot. You might notice that I rinse out my detail brush a, a great deal is because the paint will dry on it and then it will stop to perform. So I have gotten in the habit of doing a pretty consistent rinse. Now I'll put a thicker line on the back end of the wing and I do that by pressing on the brush harder and then when I want the line to get thinner, I lighten the pressure on the brush. And much like calligraphy, this helps me get an effect or a result on my brush. I'm just painting in some butterfly wing shapes. This is fun for me to do. You know, just painting those butterfly wing shapes.
trying to make the little black veins that happen and outline our little dots. I think it can be nice to put in a couple little, little black dots as well. Just going along. We're nearly done. And somebody is going to get this painting. Is this going in the swap? It's going in the swap. This is the painting that's going in the swap. So that, the way that works is that if you're a paid member of our ATC swap, you can join that by going to the uh, Art Sherpa forward slash ATC. And uh, that, that the paid version of our club allows you to send in two cards and we cover return shipping. And it's, it's not 10 a month. It's 10 for three months right now. Yeah, it's ten dollars for three months, and that's that's going to be changing soon. We're going to be changing up our ATC club swap. Uh, so if you're a, if you're joined in, don't worry, we'll have uh, lots of notifications about what's going to be happening and how that's going to be changing and going out. Uh, everything is just about improving it, though. Yeah, I think you guys are going to love, love, love everything we're doing. Things we've got robots. We have robots. We have robots. Robots. They're coming. I'm excited about the robots. Um, I know we you have. Are new website tools we have all sorts of wonderful things and and you're doing all these wonderful cool videos and and projects now yeah so, so there's just a bunch that's happening and you know the new studio is gonna really help us free up some time i, mean, I got sidetracked there ATC i know club. it's okay atc club this yeah. is not our usual video it is not our usual video, but if you want to join ATC Club, you can join it there. Now, if you want to play for free, if you don't have the money to join, what you can do is mail your card in, right, with a stamp to get it mailed back, right? And if you're internationally, this can be a challenge. So uh, if, you, if, you, if you're international and you absolutely can't find a stamp and you still want to participate, email me at atc at theartsherpa.com. Uh, and we will work it out. Uh, we want you to play. We want you to participate. So just email me, and we'll make sure that we figure out how to make that happen. But at the it, but if if you can, you can join the Art Sherpa Club for ten dollars every three months, and uh, that will just cover return shipping back. So two cards. There's my gratuitous plug of our ATC Club. And don't forget to check out Design Team. And the Design Team. We have a Design Team that helps us. You, oh, I nailed it! You, you did. <laughs> That's a very, very pretty pig. So fat. <laughs> I mean, like it's so, it's so like you, I have to be. I don't zoomed even want to touch it again because I nailed that eye. And there are three micro dots there that brought that whole thing together on the ellipse, and I didn't think I was going to be able to get there. It's like, can you tilt? I don't even know so if you can happy. do this. Can you tilt her up a bit? Uh, in what way? I don't. I don't even know if we. I can. I can barely see the micro dot. Okay. Let, do you, um. Like this. Towards, yes. Just like that. Can you? Is there any way? I don't think there is. But they're uh, coming up the front ellipse. Of the eye. I brought the. Yeah. So I brought the blue down, and then I came up in front of the pupil, with just this hair, just this speck, <laughs> just this little kiss of paint, and it like perfectly did it, and I nailed it, and I'm so happy. Since it has auto. I'm going to sip little... some coffee. I feel really proud of myself. Will it, will it be able to do it? Because you're moving. I'm moving it up. So it's... There we go. See, there we go. I can't see that. It looks fuzzy to me. Oh, I guess they can kind of see it. All right. So I was just really proud of that because those are so minuscule. And I'm just wearing my reading glasses. That's me trying to cut hands and hold that. <laughs> but I'm really proud of that. And let me tell you, it is a thing to take a small painting and, like, have anyone look at it that up close. Now, you guys don't have to sign the front of your cards. I'm going to. There we go. Because I have a way of doing that with my little detail brush, obviously, as you can now. Wow! See. That is so small. It's teeny tiny Sherpa. <sighs> I dare say it's a Sherpette. I cannot believe we did this. I am super proud of it. <laughs> I am, I have to say, I am super proud just watching you do this. This was so um, really cool. <laughs> Woo! 
Oh, so can we get an idea dance once for this? Once a month, we'll meet up like this on the first of the month. You'll get to see. I really seriously track and stalk the design team. Everybody has a very different voice. Everybody comes at their creativity from a different place. And you guys are going to get all kinds of great ideas that will combine with mine and everybody else's. And you're going to explode in your little tiny art and make pen pals and friends around the world. They love that you did this. They're just, there's lots of clapping and I did it dancing all out here going, nts, 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 nts. I did it. I did it. I did it. It's awesome. Thank you guys for coming and hanging out with us. I'm proud of myself. This is, this is really good. I have to say, I'm going to do one more, I'm going to do one more zoom in there before we go out of here so you can see that. And I'll list the exact brushes and their item numbers and everything right after. That was really, really awesome. I can't believe I got that lips around. You can and see she Cinnamon. So she's like cute. decompressing now. She's got her coffee out. She's like, ah, it's all time to coffee out and and do that. And my bubbles look more bubbly. They do. They look good. They're all reflective and shiny like soap bubbles. I like them. So flying pig, flying fish, soap bubbles in the sky. And just, just under two hours. Now, this Saturday, I have a very special painting coming up. Um, it's going to be at noon. Noon? Central Standard Time on the channel. Of course, like if all our tech works in one time. But try to be here because... We'll work it. It is... If you're one hoot, if you're new to painting, if you need something more relaxing, if you need something that just makes your spirits soar and your heart feel good... Uh, everything I designed, I really thought about, like, you know, if I had kids painting with me, um, if I had families painting with me, people who had uh, family or friends at St. Jude, people who are going through a battle with an illness. I just wanted to create works that you could hang on your wall that would make you feel amazing. So I have been going bananas designing. Yeah. Discounted about a thousand paintings is not good enough. They had... I have one request before you jump off. Hmm. We, are you going to peel the tape? Oh, would you like me to peel the tape? They would love. Zoom in, though. Zoom hold on, in, John, hold on. You got to give them a totally Christine like okay. logical moment. Here it is. Let's just go. Are all we these... going to peel it? Me, I'm, I'm, other hand, other hand. There Brilliant. you go. You ready? Peel the tape. Peel oh peel. yeah. Ooh, ooh, peel the tape. Oh. You got that piece peeled off. I all right, what you're doing right here? You zoomed in. I'm zoomed in. They're gonna. To be with us for the tape. Let me try to do it with this hand. And peel. Ooh, it's so peely. So satisfying. <laughs> this is our mm. version of ASMR tape peeling. Sensual. Painting's even prettier. <laughs> As if that's possible. <gasps> oh, so if you start to get paper to pull up, you pull back the opposite way you put the tape down and it will fix it. Or it will do it from the other side. But it's okay because you only need to have your HC intact. I overburnished, which means uh, pressing the tape down. I'm going to do this one. I'm going to peel from this side to that side, John. Okay. Ready? I'm ready. Got my little nail. I got it peeled up, and I'm going to just. <gasps> As it peels at a 45 degree peeled angle. And touch the sticky. I know this is like, I know for some people, they're like, this is like. Whoop. Okay. <laughs> All right. Isn't she pretty in the middle of that white? That is amazing. She's gorgeous. I'm so proud of her. I hope whoever gets her loves her. And now we've decided it's a her. It's a her. <laughs> Sometimes I need the painting to tell me. I just don't want to assume necessarily when I go in. Um. All right. There's a conversation that goes on between the artwork. I'm. I'm not overly concerned. It's been happening for years, and it doesn't seem to disrupt my normal life. So, all right, well, be good to yourself. <laughs> I love you guys. I sorry, not trying to step on cinnamon. Oh, you go. No, I was just saying. I, I, all right, I love you guys. I was ready to go. So just... Thank you for helping us on our journey with St. Jude. We're going to be doing more. Um, I'm probably going to put up some milestones. So, like, if we get there, we might do some cool challenges. Like, you might get to see John in a different way, or me do something crazy. <sighs> I can't wait to see you. There will be quests between now and this weekend if you're questing. But at the end of the day, be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you with the teeny tiny easel really, really soon. Goodbye. <laughs>